Man's Best Friend, an original short story written by Digital Dad. Cole waited patiently by the door for his master to get home from work. The dog, an all-black pug, did not know what time it was, nor did he grasp any concept of its mechanics. Yet, somewhere within his animal mind, a predatory sense not yet lost to evolution brought him to the front door at the same time each day to eagerly greet his companion, whom he loved dearly. Hearing the kerthunk of a car door, the squat little dog stood up, stretched himself out, and began what could only be described as his happy dance. Wiggling and writhing from his soot smudge of a nose to his curled piglet tail, the tempo of the dance increased with every telling sound of his owner's impending return. Footsteps clopping up the sidewalk, the creak of the rusty hinge on the mailbox, and the final delightful metallic snick of the keys sliding into the front door lock sent Cole into a fervor of excitement. The dog always tried to keep calm until he heard the keys, since sometimes the other sounds could be a deceptive mailman or an unannounced visitor, but today he did not need to wait until the keys gave it away. He knew it was his master. Unfortunately, the reason he knew it was his master was because he could feel Mr. Shadow walking up the sideway, sidewalk behind him. Mr. Shadow was bad news, and Cole did not like him one single bit. If Mr. Shadow was around, that meant Cole didn't get to go on his walk, or get a nice rub down, or a belly scratch, or treats, or really anything of the things he liked best. Sometimes, when Mr. Shadow was acting especially bad, Cole's master sometimes forgot to fill his bowls up, or even forget to let him outside to use the bathroom. The rotund dog knew that this wasn't his human's fault, but it still made him sad whenever the shadow came around. Even before the door opened, the pug knew it would be one of his master's bad days. Cole knew that sound, just like he understood his name, lay down, and most importantly, no. But he hated that sound, bad day, worse than any of the words he knew. He did not like when his companion felt this way, and the small dog made sure to be on extra good behavior, whether he got to go on his walk or not. Hiya, buddy. How was your day? His human asked him as he entered the door to the still wriggling pup. The man gave Cole a small scratch on his head before kicking off his shoes and laying his keys on the table by the door. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. I'm having a bad day, the man told the pug. Although the perceptive animal had already felt it coming, he was still saddened by the noise, bad day, affirming that Mr. Shadow was here. No walk today, he thought to himself. Cole followed the man throughout the house like a miniature bodyguard to the bedroom where the human changed into his standard bad day garb, consisting of a pair of pajama pants and a tattered concert tee holding on to its status as clothing by literal threads. Shuffling down the hall, his faithful guard pattering just behind him, the man passed through the kitchen, grabbing a bag of potato chips as he went, and moved out into the living room where he closed the heavy curtains, blocking out all but a slight sliver of light 
from the entering the now dusky living room. When his master fell into the couch, seemingly exhausted, and snapped on the television in front of it, filling the darkened room with hues of blue and gray as the picture danced on the screen. Cole joined his friend on the couch, but was very careful not to intrude his space. Sometimes Mr. Shadow got mean when Cole would beg for his master to share some of his kibble, or if he tried to snuggle up for some belly rubs, but so far the only sign of his presence was the feeling that the dog felt in his stomach. I know you're there, Mr. Shadow, the dog thought to himself. You won't trick me into letting you out. The dog chose a safe spot near the feet of his owner, now outstretched on the couch, chewing noisily on his chips. Every time his master chew, Cole saw flecks of the sweet, salty kibble crumble onto the cushion, right by the human's pillow-propped head. This the dog could bear with the idea that the spot could be foraged tomorrow for the delicious crumbs, and the fabric itself licked clean of grease and salt. What Cole could not ignore, however, was the whole bits of his human's kibble that slipped from the man's hand as he drew it from the bag to his mouth, landing next to the couch on the floor. Dogs, like most animals of a predatory origin, simply cannot let food go to waste. To ignore food is to go against every natural instinct in that creature's body. And so, Cole slowly raised himself from the foot of the couch. The key is here not to move too fast, the, bug th the pug thought. If I move quickly, then... He'll know I found something. Sticking with this plan, he crept to the edge of the sofa and, as gracefully as he could, jumped down. As he slowly began to waddle forward, he had another thought. I'll go behind the couch, and I'll come up between the side of it and the table, the dog mused. He could lean out to grab the bits of fallen kibble, quickly duck back in between the furniture to munch at his leisure. Cole thought this was a great plan as far as plans go. Halfway around the opposite side of the couch, the dog stopped, dead in his tracks. His stomach felt heavy again, like he had swallowed a stone and he began to regret moving from the end of the couch. He noticed that the sound of his human crunching kibble had stopped. When he turned his head to look, he saw his master's hand reach up over the back of the couch and pull a blanket up over him. Oh no, Mr. Shadow is pretty bad today, Cole decided. He could hear wet noises from the man's mouth, and his nose, and his eyes. The dog wondered if his human was getting sick. The man, curled up under the blanket, was barely visible in the dim hue of the darkened living room. Well, now's my chance while his head is under the covers, the pug realized as he hurried underneath the end table, giving him full view of the chip-riddled carpet. As his animal instincts kicked in high gear, he locked on to the biggest hunk of human kibble he could see, and he softly trotted out from his cover to claim it. The noise from the television covered the sounds of his paws perfectly, allowing Cole to make it to his goal unscathed. He lifted the chip into his mouth, careful not to bite down too hard, and let the salt taste wash over his small black tongue. It was everything he had dreamed for, and more. Turning back around the way he came, Cole was eager to retreat back to the cover of the end table so that he could enjoy his bounty. Before he could make his escape, the dog quickly scanned the sofa as a precaution, 
It would have been a terrible travesty for the pug to have tasted such a sweet treat only to get scolded before getting to eat it. What Cole saw stopped the dog again in his tracks, and an involuntary rumbling gurgle of a growl began to form from his throat. He completely forgot about the potato chip and let it fall to the floor as his black lips pulled back, revealing his small, pointy teeth. Mr. Shadow. Underneath the ridges and ruffles of the blanket, Cole could see the shifting gray cloud that was Mr. Shadow, slipping out here and there. Oh, what's he doing in there? The protective dog wondered. He slowly drew himself closer to the couch, ignoring the noises he had previously been trying to avoid in movement. He saw something shiny underneath the fabric. His growl curled up from his throat into a high-pitched yet serious bark. Whatever was under that blanket froze in its place, almost as if... It were trying not to move, but Cole wasn't stupid. He was a dog, but he wasn't stupid. He knew Mr. Shadow was there. Cole barked again, three times in rapid succession. Bark! 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 The last one taping off into a guttural, low growl. Shut up! He heard his master saying, except... It wasn't entirely his master. It came out with a background hiss instead of his normal voice. Shut up, it cried. It was a long and drawn out sound. It sounded reptilian. Long fingers like a translucent gray cloud slid out from underneath the blanket near the place where Cole had seen the shiny thing. The fingers, like tendrils of shifting cigarette smoke, curled around the edge of the cover, pulling them down over the human and quickly slipping out of sight. Oh, that's bad. This is bad, Cole knew. That shiny thing is so bad. And while he had never seen anything like it, his instincts were screaming at him that it was a terrible thing. A terrible, terrible thing. And whatever it was, Mr. Shadow had it. He had to get that away from his master. He, he had to do it immediately. The brave dog, now completely oblivious to his own fears of the manifestation, sprinted onto the sofa and snagging a mouthful of the fabric of the blanket, pulling just as hard as his little body could. The sudden tug on the blanket uncovered his master's face, red and swollen from crying. But as the dog let go of the blanket to call to his human, the smoky tendrils reached up quickly to pull the cover up again. Cole, realizing the error in his ways, snatched the cloth into his mouth and again began to pull. This time, however, the creature was ready for him and resisted the dog's effort by pulling himself. Cole hunkered down low and spread his stubby legs wide, gaining a good foothold on the cushion of the couch, and began to slowly yank the blanket down inch by inch. Suddenly, a foot veiled in gray swung out from under the covers, connecting with the dog's haunch and sending him sprawling to the floor with a yelp. Leave me alone, his, crest, his master cried, but as Cole picked himself up off the floor, he heard the undertone of Mr. Shadow hissing again. Leave me alone. For a moment, the dog had accepted this order. He tried to protect his master from the entity, and he had failed. Cole felt defeated, turning his head away from the sofa in the direction of the TV. The dog heard a metallic snick, which 
sounded a lot like his master's keys opening the front door. It made the dog think of how he waited by the front door each day. It made him think of how he wiggled and squirmed in eager anticipation, knowing that his human was home. He loved his master, and he knew that even on the bad days, even when Mr. Shadow came around, he knew that his master loved him too. Cole leapt up, invigorated by his thoughts, and sprang back into action. Running over and vaulting up onto the couch where he last saw the shining bad thing, he snatched another mouthful of the fabric with a defensive snarl, and he threw himself backwards over the couch cushions to the floor below. The dog felt pain blossoming up his back as he hit the floor, but rather than cry out in pain, he let bellow a vicious bark, as vicious as a pug can muster, not from his throat, but from deep in the dog's barrel chest. Just as fast as he saw the blanket showering to the floor around him, he watched it as it was lifted back up to the sofa, concealing his master once again. No, uh, he spat out a bark. I won't let you hurt my human. Stop it, Cole. Cole didn't give time for Mr. Shadow to speak along with his master. Before the man could finish his sentence, the dog was back up on the couch, and hearing where the voice was coming from, bit down hard into the blanket where he hoped was his master's nose was. The man cried out in pain, sitting up swiftly and clutching his nose. Small, pin-sized rivulets of red blood dripped from in between his fingers. There were no more gray tendrils around his master's fingers, and Cole saw no more signs of Mr. Shadow. What the hell, Cole? The man asked him through his muffled nose. He reached up with his other hand to cover his eyes from the sliver of light that shone down through the shaded windows. That hand was clutching the shining thing. That hand was wrapped in a shroud of gray smoke. Mr. Shadow was not gone after all. And Cole finally realized what that shiny, terrible thing was. That shiny, terrible thing was a gun. The dog watched as the tendrils enveloped his master and pulled him back down onto the couch, removing the hand with the gun in it from his forehead, placing it on his chest with the barrel pointed up against the man's chin. Before the dog had time to even register the thought, he was climbing up onto the television stand. With his front paws pressed against the wall to lengthen his reach, Cole was just able to grasp the edge of the curtains with his front teeth. Here goes nothing, he told himself, and he once again threw himself into the air. The long curtain rods held for a second or two before the nails holding the brackets tore out of the wall entirely. But for Cole, the all-black pug, it felt like an absolute eternity. He dangled from the curtains higher from the floor than the little dog had ever been before by just his meager teeth. And just when he felt his strength failing, he felt a snap and he fell to the ground in a great thundering crash of curtains and brass hardware. This time, he felt no pain, and he saw nothing but darkness. The man sat up again, this time unable to shield his eyes from the sunlight glaring into the window. As his eyes adjusted to the brightness, he held up the revolver in his flattening palms of both hands. He stared at it for a very long time. Then, without warning, and treating it as though it were scalding hot, Cole's master tossed the pistol onto the couch behind him, shaking his head and wiping tears from his eyes. Cole? 
the man called out, his voice wavering. Buddy, he tried again, but still wiping tears from his bloodshot eyes. He stood up, searching for the mangled heap of brass rods and curtains. Pal! Cole, where are you, Cole? A small, pug-sized lump of curtain began to wiggle and writhe. From his soot smudge of a nose to his curled piglet tail, Cole, the black pug, was doing his happy dance. Digital Dad here. Thanks for listening to my short story. I put a lot of work into it, so please give me a like. And if you enjoyed reading this, subscribe for more original short stories as well as other story readings from professional authors. Appreciate it. Thanks.